We're going to proceed with the program. We, um, we are excited tonight that Ed Green, the chairman of, of the board and CEO of DuPont, has agreed to be our keynote speaker. Mr. Breen joined DuPont as chairman of the board in 2015 and was eventually named CEO a year later. He also serves as director of Comcast Corporation. His full bio is in the program. Be sure to read the DuPont article in our annual report, Delaware Business Magazine, on page 29. DuPont has not only played a vital role in Delaware, but has been an important partner with the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce and was our founding members 180 years ago. In fact, Ed happens to be the fourth DuPont CEO to keynote this dinner. Before I ask Ed to come up here, let's say one more thing. I uh, learned about Ed tonight uh, when we met with him a little earlier. You know, you read about somebody in the Wall Street Journal, in the New York Times, and even the uh, News Journal, uh, and you get this picture bigger than life. Ed is very down to earth. He does understand this community. He does understand the company that he runs now and he understands what the company will be in the future. Ed, could you please come up? At DuPont, we understand one thing perhaps better than any other company on Earth, change. Change animates the physical world of science. It drives invention and the commercial world of business. And so, as a science company, change is at the heart of all we do and all that we are. We were born in 1802 to a young nation in a time of profound and widespread change. And for more than two centuries, we have thrived by embracing change and transforming ourselves to master it through constant innovation. Again and again, we've adapted to connect our world-class science and engineering to real-world challenges and real-world opportunities. We've built a legacy of creating competitive advantage for customers that spans from the industrial revolution to the digital revolution. And this ability to master change has never been more important than it is today. With so much in transition, customers rely on the steadiness of our deep market knowledge and understanding. They depend on our expertise to deliver solutions more efficiently, more effectively, and more productively. That's why we've once again transformed DuPont to make our innovation model more productive and to align our focus with the needs of our customers, faster, better, more effective. This has been the unifying theme of our 200-year journey to connect science to seemingly intractable problems. As the challenges have evolved, so has DuPont. And so we stand on the cusp of the next evolution, a profound transformation that will secure the future by once again creating change that in turn can change the world. Good evening, everyone. It is uh, truly an honor uh, to be here with you. Um, I did hear about the dinner last year, and I was glad I did not attend that one. Uh, but I'm very fortunate and happy to be here tonight. Thank you, Rich, for the introduction. Um, I also wanted to thank the um, Board of Governors and the entire chamber for all your work you do to create this supportive environment um, in the state of Delaware for businesses. And as was mentioned, DuPont has a 180-year relationship with the chamber. It's just incredible and uh, a bright future in front of us. With all the change at uh, DuPont over the last year, and I will get into that in a moment, um, I also wanted to thank the whole Delaware delegation for their efforts over this past year and a half. The group clearly understood that we needed to change and we all had to tighten our belt a little bit so we could all prosper and grow again um, in the future. And uh, that's what we're beginning to do. So I want to thank uh, Governor Jack Markell, and I will come back to that, uh, Governor-elect John Carney, Senator Tom Carper, who I see just arrived, 
Senator Chris Coons and Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester and the whole assembly for all the work you did with DuPont this past year and your constituencies here in the state. And I think we have a great outcome and a, a great future uh, as we move forward. And thank you to all of you here in the room because uh, I've worked in four different states running companies and I have never seen anything like this. My good friend, Jack Kroll, um, who became my lead director when I ran Tyco, many of you know Jack, um, always used to tell me about the Delaware Way and how special it was and how everyone worked so close together. Um, and I used to scratch my head because it didn't work that way in New York and other states. I won't mention a few that are close by. Uh, but you guys have something special here, and it's all of you in the room, too, that obviously are contributing to that. So congratulations to all of you. And I, I was so honored to sit next to Carol, our honoree tonight. She truly had no clue, I can tell you, I was next to her. And uh, thank you for everything you've done for the community. It's just impressive and spectacular to hear. Now, Jack Kroll always used to, besides telling me about the Delaware Way, for those that know him and anyone that's at all close to DuPont, you know about core values. And it's the backbone of DuPont. And I can tell you, this company really lives its core values. And after Jack said core values, the next three words out of his mouth were safety, safety, and safety. It's the most important thing we do. And by the way, at a chemical company with the type of facilities we have, that's absolutely a true statement. It, it was amazing to me not only how serious DuPont took it, but I was touring the Hagley Museum uh, last year, learning about the company and its history. And lo and behold, I found one of the oldest documents from DuPont. You probably can't see that, but it's a handwritten note from Mr. DuPont. And it's the safety rules and the environment rules for the company, and it's dated 1811. Can you imagine somebody having those kind of core values 200 years ago? And it really hit me. Um, I can't read the handwritten one, so I had it typed over. And I just wanted to read you a couple, a few lines here. As the greatest order is indispensable in this manufactory, as well as the, I'm not speaking bad, it's written that way, by the way. As well as the regulatory of the works, then for the safety of the workmen themselves, the following rules shall strictly observed by every one of the men employed in the factory. No strangers will be allowed for any pretext whatsoever to be boated over the creek for their convenience. <laughs> Boats shall be locked at seven o'clock in the winter, nine o'clock in the summer. All kind of play and disorderly fun is prohibited. <laughs> what the heck? We don't, we don't follow that one any, anymore. This one you're gonna love. No kind of spirituous liquors is allowed to be fetched and drink in the factory. All the men that would appear this work in a state of intoxication shall be dismissed. Nothing's changed in 200 years. So anyway, it was just great and we truly do live great core values um, at DuPont. Um, Listen, it really is an honor to be able to lead um, DuPont. Um, I was sliding my way into retirement after having run, been a CEO for almost 20 years. 20 years is a long time to do that kind of a job. And I was easing into it, gonna spend the winter in Florida, and somehow I ended up here tonight talking to you as the CEO of DuPont. Um, my wife keeps bugging me, well, how did that happen, Ed? And um, I said, you know, just over many weeks, I kind of fell in love with the company. Um, the employees are tremendous. Uh, the work effort is tremendous. The teamwork in the company is unbelievable. Everyone wants to chip in, resolve problems. Uh, it's just a great environment. I always said getting to know the company, the thing I love about it, uh, there's many things I love about it, but one of the things is it's an innovation machine like no other. I call it the heart of the company. What comes out of DuPont is absolutely incredible. Um, and the intimacy with our customers, as you saw in that video, is second to none. When, it, when you're in a corporate office as a CEO and every day you hear somebody talking about customers at my level, something's really good um, in the environment and the company. So uh, I kind of fell in love with it and um, I'm really enjoying it. I knew I was coming into a difficult circumstance, but. Uh, 
nevertheless, I'm, I'm having a good time and uh, having a good time with the team. Um, I'd like to take you back um, about 16, 18 months ago and put the whole DuPont saga of the past year or so into context um, for you. Um, you know, it's, every company has opportunities, every company has challenges. That's what we get paid for, that's what we deal with. And uh, DuPont was no different. Uh, at the time, though, we were sliding into a few more problems than you would probably want to have. Um, first of all, our revenue line was shrinking. Uh, we were losing about 2% on the revenue line every quarter, and that was going on almost two years. Um, at the point we were in the middle of 2015. Uh, you can't do well if your revenue line is not growing. Um, this, the second thing we had was um, that besides the revenue line, our earnings were sinking pretty dramatically. They were down by almost 35%. And therefore, as many of you would know in this room, our stock price was not doing well and we were somewhere floating around in the mid $40 range. And that was a real problem. But, but to me, those problems are very fixable. Um, you know, it's just gonna take some hard work and operational focus and we could do that. The bigger issue though, and I say there's also risks in a company, and, and I'm a big believer, some of the biggest business decisions I've ever made in my career is when I had a big risk and we actually turned it into our biggest opportunity because you can't ignore risk. If a torpedo is gonna hit your ship, you better be thinking about it and how am I gonna stop it? And the one interesting thing we had at DuPont while all this was going on was a big strategic uh, concern. You got, in our company, 40% of our revenue is in the agriculture business, but two thirds of the value of DuPont is the agriculture company. So it's the behemoth that carries the, the value of the business. It was in a very soft period in time. By the way, the agriculture business is still very soft. Um, we expect another year of it in 2017. But the issue we had is it looked like the industry was gonna consolidate. And we thought, boy, with the board, are we gonna get out in front of this or are we gonna let all the events unfold in front of us and have 60% of the value of DuPont stuck? We were very worried that there was gonna be five to four to five big players in the ag business and that was it. And we did not wanna be the number five player and we would have been a distance weakened number five player. That was the strategic dilemma. So that's where we sat. Um, as I said, it was rather interesting to come in as the new person with uh, that as the lay of the land. But, but what ended up happening is the board really focused on, look, what do we need to get fixed? And we gotta get it fixed as quick as we can. And we made a very painful decision which started the ball rolling on a lot of our conversations with the delegation. It was very unfortunate. But we realized through benchmarking all the studies we did, we were just too heavy of a company from an overhead standpoint and we needed to cut out a billion dollars of expense. Um, we did that as quick as we could at the beginning of last year, so it was less painful than dra dragging it out over multiple years. And we accomplished that and got it done, and that really helped our numbers. On the heels of that, we had been talking to Dow Chemical uh, for quite a period of time, and we finally got to the point where we're like, wow, our team always said to me, Ed, if we could merge our ag company with Dow's, that would be utopia. And that became a real impetus to say, I wonder if we could pull something off with them and not only fix our problem, but then put us in the strongest position in the ag industry. Um, thank heavens we did what we did because if, for those that follow the industry, it consolidated um, big time. And uh, all the deals happened within months of ours. Um, and so th we really did the deal we wanted to do. But, but let me talk about the Dow DuPont merger a second. Um, I am very excited by this. Having been through something like this a couple times in my past, I think we're gonna create tremendous value for our shareholders, which will translate into tremendous value for our employees and all our stakeholders over time. What we're gonna do is put the two big companies together. What I love about it, it's a tax-free transaction, so no one's paying a premium to the other company. So every move we make from day one will create value for all our stakeholders. There's no premium to work our way through or anything. 
it was just incredible. We happened to be both about the same size and we could pull off the tax-free nature of this deal. It's a very unusual deal. You don't see a lot of them happen. Um, we will be together as Dow DuPont. I will lead the company as the CEO. We'll be together for about 18 months and then we will subsequently separate into three companies. A world-leading agriculture company, having that fixed, a world-leading specialty company, a world-leading material science company. And they will all happen about the same time together, uh, 18 months down the road. I'm very excited. We're going to have focused companies in key industries. We'll be a leader in ag. We'll have boards of directors of the companies focused on those sets of industries. We're setting all three companies up with a very strong balance sheet. So we have all the flexibility we need when we come out of the chute. If we want to do some acquisitions, invest in more organic growth, invest in more R&D, uh, we'll be able to do that. And I really am pleased. Uh, there was a few months I, I loved my job at the beginning, but there were parts of those first few months I wish I didn't have to deal with. Uh, but the outcome was very beautiful with two of the companies, Ag and Specialty, as was mentioned earlier. Uh, going to be headquartered here in the state of Delaware, and they're going to be two strong, vibrant companies. I, I, I want to make a mention again. There was a lot of help and a lot of conversations along with it, but Governor Markell was absolutely incredible. He, he came to my office one day. He had a notepad in his hand and a pen, and he said, Ed, we're going to sit here and I'm going to figure out how two of these companies end up in the state. And we did. So again, congratulations for all your effort. So that, that's the merger. I'm very excited. These are going to be three big companies. I'm a big believer that all three of these are going to be must-own stocks by all of the big institutions. You're going to have to own every one of these because the significance they will play in each of their key industries. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, let me talk, talk to you about um, 2016. As bad as everything seemed, um, we had and are having, it's ended, I can't talk about the fourth quarter, they'll put me in a striped outfit and send me off, but um, we had a tremendous year. From a tough set 14-15, we just, I think, blew it out this year. Remember I said our revenues were shrinking? We've turned that around. They're now growing about 2%. That difference between negative two and plus two is huge when you run a company and you have a P&L statement. It's huge, four points of delta. Our gross margins are up across the board in the company. That's attributable to two things. We're running our factories more efficient. We have a very focused program on that. It's working. The biggest thing is our innovation machine is working and we are producing new products to the marketplace the customers want and we're getting pricing for it. So it's been phenomenal to watch uh, that also. We did take our costs down a billion dollars, which is obviously going to take our profitability way up in itself. Um, and therefore, our earnings are up significantly. Nick, our CFO, is here, my right-hand person. Um, we got to announce last quarter when we announced our third quarter results that our earnings were up 250% year over year. It was incredible. <laughs> and more importantly, I'm a big free cash flow guy. Our cash flow is up more than a billion dollars from this time last year. That's a billion dollars after all the misery we went through in the belt tightening that we can now spend to grow the company, maybe buy another company. It's a lot of extra money to have, and that opportunity sits in front of us to actually improve that more. Um, I want to talk about innovation for just a second, because that's the heart of this company. And, you know, a lot of things have been written and said, and many of the things I, quite frankly, have to bite my tongue, and that's fine. But in 2017, we are going to spend $1.7 billion on R&D, which is the historic run rate that the company has run at for the last 10 to 12 years. We had upticked a little in 13, 14, 15. We brought it back to its historic level. We're going to inch it up a little bit next year to $1.7 billion. Uh, this past year, through three quarters, we launched 660 new products. 
Um, we had, I was telling the governor, we had a few products that had big impact in our earnings this year. We introduced a product called Leptra, which is an above ground insect product. Brazil is one of our biggest ag markets. We introduced it in Brazil. In one season, it was 50% of our sales. It was the most rapid launch we've ever had in our agriculture company. You saw Tyvek in the little promo there. Tyvek's been around forever, but we just broke into all of Lowe's as a national account. We're going now in every Lowe's store that they have. It's the single biggest opportunity for us to gain market share in the remodeling market where Tyvek plays. It was just awesome. And by the way, P&G is one of our fabulous customers, but we always had certain good areas with them, and we have now broken into about 15 new areas to work with uh, P&G on, and they voted us one of their 40 suppliers of the year out of 50,000. Um, so these are the ways we got to gain market share, grow the company, and it was great. More importantly, our plans for 2017, I'm really excited about. Uh, we just approved a $100 million expansion for our capacity for our probiotics line. And I hope you all take probiotics, by the way. I don't know if you knew DuPont did that. Uh, we're, we're one of basically two companies that supply the world probiotics. We have a very unique product, uh, much stronger than our competitor. And our business last quarter was grew 31%. So we're gonna spend $100 million increasing capacity in the business and have that in place in another year and we'll really expand our sales um, in that area. The other thing um, I'm really excited about, and you're gonna see more announcements from DuPont and some of our announcements will be with the delegation over the ensuing months here, but I think we're gonna be doing some really great things for the local community and all the communities we work in. One of the things I'm excited about, our board of directors just approved a plan to spend $200 million to modernize and upgrade the experimental station. optimize many of our labs. Um, we're going to set up network collaboration centers for our scientists, for our customers to come in. A lot of customers come in, by the way, to test things with us and for our suppliers. What I'm also really excited about, and we've been talking to the governor and the delegation for the past year, uh, we're going to put space aside and upgrade space for third-party companies to come in. They, they're going to have to be science-based companies I'm hoping they're somewhat contiguous to things that DuPont's interested in. Uh, you never know, we would be interested in making investments of ourselves to help some of these startups out. Uh, but we really want to use it as an incubation center. DuPont's done it in the past. Uh, there are other tenants in the experimental station, you know, and Comores is still in the experimental station. After we split the three companies, Dow will be in the experimental station. I just think it's a great environment for collaboration, scientific study and all. It's such a great facility. It would still be predominantly DuPont, but it would be neat to have some other tenants in there that are really working in the same area. So we're so excited by that. So let me just close out again by saying thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you tonight. I was, I was really excited, too, because of everything that's been going on at the company. I, I think we have DuPont quicker than I thought. Um, in a really good spot. We have momentum going into 2017. Um, our stock is where it should be. It's way up, um, you know, in the mid-70s I saw today. Um, and so I'm feeling good, and I think we have great plans without the merger, by the way, just on our own, but with the merger on top of it. We've got a lot of growth and a lot of excitement coming the next few years. So I look forward to hopefully speaking to you all again. And, to even more success um, next year. Thank you very much, everyone.